India is a country in which SUVs have been etched into its mainframe. And the Hyundai Krita is one on which you embark anywhere around and you're going to feel the sense of boldness that keeps increasing not only because of the way it looks but also because of the way you're going to feel once you're in it. This is the Hyundai Krita. There's a four-cylinder petrol engine storage out here that also serves up as a wireless charging pad. You buy an SUV today, you do that so that you're sitting high above the road and that's exactly the way I'm feeling right now. The headlamps on the crate out here are bifunctional projectors. Below down here you see these LED DRLs that wrap around the fog lamp cluster, giving it a really butchy stance with the bumper just simply jotting out this way. A nice little skid plate that runs at the bottom here. The grille is totally based on Hyundai's fluidic concept. It has this lovely cascading effect, just merging down seamlessly. A couple of lines that are strong on the bonnet. Moving around the side, what we have your 17 inch diamond cut alloys. Makes the car sit nice and high. However, I do think if they were a little bit wider, it would have increased the appeal. But that would have only happened if there were wider wheel wells. Along the side, you got this strong shoulder line that runs right across it. LED tail lamps at the back that have been split due to the tailgate. The car has a good stance and I do feel it's so strong with its looks. It's pretty much that SUV that you want to move around in. Down here you've got another skid plate that comes in. The boot inside the crater gives you 400 liters of space, enough to move around luggage. The front seats are foldable in the 60-40 split, which will definitely give you much more than you need. 17 inches is the spare wheel size down here. A little bit of storage on either corner over here. You've got a single exhaust pipe opening that's right down there. Now this crate out here is the SX Automatic Patrol. Underneath its hood, what you can see out here is a four-cylinder petrol engine that produces 123 PS of power and 151 Newton meters of torque. The entire engine bay is very well enclosed, some insulation element at the back out there inside the cabin of the crater now and what i can totally feel is i'm so well padded up underneath the seat comfort is really good wraps you around good insulation outside noise is non-present the dash on the crater has a sloping effect and it all converges down to the seven inch infotainment system materials around the cabin are all hard touch nothing is soft as much however it does give you a good sense of sturdiness Makes you feel like you're sitting really high up, which is what I am. Visibility all around is really good. The visors, you get a mirror only on the passenger side. As for the sunroof, it opens up nice and wide. Gives decent amount of light even to the people at the back. When you want to shut it though, click that, but the shade has to be pulled back manually. The storage space is inside the crater now. The glove case can house up to a one liter bottle max. That goes shut. Inside the door bins, I can see a one and a half liter bottle, maximum fitting in there. Inside the center console region, we've got some storage out here that also serves up as a wireless charging pad for your phone, which is a really neat touch, in fact, on the claw of this class. Couple of cup holders in here. Okay-ish, can't see big cups fitting in there at all. You've got a sliding armrest coming out here. Pop that open. Storage is all right. Not much, but yeah, it's handy if you probably want to just dump in something quickly. And then there's also a sunglass hatch up there. So the air conditioning system in the crater is a single zone climatic control system. And that's with your fan speed. You've got an off switch out there. And the mode lets you control the airflow from the AC. Neat display out there that says clean air coming in. The infotainment system has a 7 inch touch screen. The touch response is decent. You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto as well as MirrorLink. There's also a Hyundai's connectivity app that lets you stay connected to the car at all times. Overall, it's pretty neat. You get all your details, whatever you want. Bluetooth is inside it as well. The infotainment system also comes with some inbuilt navigation. The panning around the navigation is pretty decent. It's quick and urgent. You can see you're not going to be experiencing any kind of lag. There's also an SD card slot that comes down out here. Moving into the steering wheel has rake function. There's no reach, however, so it doesn't come towards you. You've got a three-spoked steering wheel here in the crater. You've got cruise control on this side. Your media options this side is also a little bit of a voice control command system that helps you control your phone information. Inside the driver's instrument cluster, the trip button out here is what controls the information that you get to see out there. It's all digital and it's embedded in that tiny screen that's right out there. But the finishing of the wheel is nice to touch, it's got some good feel. 
On this side, I've got my button for shutting out the rear view mirrors. I just simply shut it one click. Down here, I've got my light adjustments. If I want to set it to high or low beam, whatever it is, increase that intensity or even the brightness of the cabin can be set up from this button out here. Out here, this toxic houses my toning indicators, lights, and on this side, I've got my wiper controls. In the back seat of the Creta, headroom is really spacious. Legroom as well, I'm comfortable completely. In terms of the armrests out here, a couple of cup holders pop right open, you can't access the boot. Comfort wise, it's good. Leather upholstery is what this car has, the SX Auto. Materials around here at the back, door panel out here, a little bit hard to touch. You got a decent storage that comes out here, half a liter bottle, some speakers out there, automated windows. Most of it is all hard to touch. A couple of AC vents out here, a 12 volt charging socket down there. Three at the back, however, is possible. Not for really long distance, maybe a short drive around the city. You'd manage it. Let's get out of here now and take you for a quick drive. All set and move off with the credit on the road. Push start button out here. Starts the engine. Gotta use this wireless charging feature. It's really fancy. Putting it in a D and we're good to go. The AC control. Turns on from here. Gotta remember your seat belts though. These cars are not gonna let you move without screaming in your ears. And it just glides off. Nice. The pedals are pretty close down there. And I can just literally tell you one thing. That the amount of airiness in this cabin and the kind of space that it's actually occupying on the road is good. It's got good road presence. It makes you feel like the other cars are just simply going to give you way whenever you move around in this one. It does have some good suspension features. It's sitting on the McPherson struts. Hyundai's done a good job with it overall. It's an SUV at the end of it and it's got to handle bumps with relative ease. Side view mirrors are good. They're massive. The glass at the rear end is also huge. So visibility from all ends up from the A pillars to the B pillars to the C is all clear cut visible. And as for the acceleration part, about to find that out right now. So when you just put the pedal of the metal out here a little bit, it does go up all the way to 3000 RPM. Maybe a little bit of lag, but the car does fine. In terms of city as well, you can feel that 123 PS pumping out the engine, 150 Newton meters of torque. Some might find that to be a little bit less on the lower side, but I wouldn't really. It's got good stance, that's the main thing. You buy an SUV today, you do that so that you're sitting high above the road and that's exactly the way I'm feeling right now, sitting high above the road. I'm sitting in such a position where I can look from all sides and I've got decent visibility. That's a main plus point. Blind spots as well, I can see through them all, so I'm not worried. So now the Hyundai Creta, I've driven it, I've felt its comfort, I've seen what it looks like from outside as well. What do I think of it? Is it an SUV that you would like to drive around Mumbai city or anywhere around India? I definitely do think so. That's my answer. And that's backed up by whatever's under its hood. It's decent power, it's not all that big figures, but it's good. It keeps you on the road, it keeps you aware of whatever's happening around you. It handles different terrain decently enough. No much of off-roading capability, but I'm not sure people do buy SUVs today with that kind of a mindset. The Creta though, is the car that you'd want out there if you want to look out on the road by not spending too much either, but still standing out from the crowd.